All right. Well, we were we are at five after, so I will go ahead and kick us off here. Uh, some people have been following the workshops throughout the day, so we have a combination of both NSEC competitors and uh, just people listening in from the public. Thank you, everybody, for joining. If you aren't familiar with NSEC, it is a, a conference hosted by the National Society of Sales Engineers specifically for students interested in entering the sales engineering profession. So we have, typically have a three-day competition associated with this conference. And as students are learning, they're also practicing the skills in a three-part role play, uh, making a technical sale to a customer. So with that, I wanna introduce Miguel. So I met Miguel this year, actually, he's a first time volunteer for NSEC and he is a mentor. And yeah, I've heard great things from the teams and the mentors alike, uh, how interactive the process has been. So I wanna thank you, Miguel, for being a mentor this year. Uh, he's also teaching at my alma mater, which is University of Central Florida. Uh, and funny enough, I did not know him until I, or did not know that until I met him this year. So I think that's a funny coincidence. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> thank you again. So I'll hand it over to you, Miguel, to take the show. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much. So thank you very, everyone for joining. Um, I hope you guys have as much fun watching this presentation as I had preparing. So, and I hope you guys can, can hear me well. So as just some just said, um, I am Miguel. I am, uh, uh, if we were in a, in a kind of a, one of those sales engineer anonymous <laughs> meeting, like a alcoholic anonymous, I would say, okay, I am a sales engineer, I am Miguel Minix, and I am a sales engineer. And you probably would say, hi, Miguel, yeah, because this is kind of a, something that people do on this kind of meeting. The fact is, uh, being sales engineer is quite addictive for me, it's a nice job, and I've been doing that for 20 years already, and just celebrated that back in August. And as part of it, um, the best part of it is that I have no plans to leave this career. Okay, first, uh, because I really enjoy that. And second, because I heard that the deprivation crisis during the detox phase are quite awful. So I'd rather to stay as I am. And you notice that I have a lot of bad jokes <clears throat> while we are talking, okay? Right now, I work as a um, uh, systems engineer at a company called Agile and Solutions. Agile, I work for the advisory and transformation team there. This is a North American company based out of New York. Uh, it offers strategic design and uh, IT technologies and offers like a world-class service in order to help the customers in the digital transformation process, okay? So we, uh, use those best practices and our experience of our, our personnel to make the customers get back where, on track where they want or when, where they should be. Uh, after hours, I use my superpowers to help building the next generation of IT and cybersecurity professionals. I am an adjunct instructor uh, at cybersecurity program here in Orlando at the UCF. Uh, this is a nationwide program, so not just UCF belongs to that. So sometimes I'm, I'm, I spend like 99% of my teaching time on, in UCF, but sometimes I'm helping other teachers, other instructors in other locations also. For example, New Jersey Institute of Technology, for example, is a place that I help uh, those guys also. Okay, so we, uh, we are talking about uh listening so this is an irony right because while uh the ironic part of it is that uh, while guys are here to are here to hear about listening yeah, uh, and practicing that in the way as it should i'm the one that will be talking about listening so this is the irony i will talk about listen okay this is one on uh, one of the ironies that i faced this week when I was preparing this material, I said, man, I'm, I'll be talking about some, how people should be listening. But the first lesson for today, so for you guys, is that 
when this is about listening, you should do what I'm saying and not should, don't do what I'm doing at this uh, right now, okay? So talking about listening, uh, what is, uh, I must recognize uh, one of the greatest, greatest virtues that a sales engineer can have is cultivate the power of asking good questions. And uh, this is an exercise, this is something that you cultivate and that you bring it, uh, how you do powerful questions. This is an art, very few people master this art, like they have talent to get the perfect question in the perfect situation in, and get the very perfect outcome on every meeting. It's very, very few people that can do that. And, uh, and I will explain a, a why, why in a meeting, but in a minute, but before you start thinking, oh my God, what I'm doing here, I should be in the other room, virtual room, where the guys are talking about creating powerful questions, not here, talk about listening. And before you consider moving to that room, I have about, I have about a very powerful question for you is this, uh, what is the matter of asking good questions if you're not, don't hear, and if you don't listen for the answers, right? And you may ask yourself, why? Miguel is, is talking about uh, hearing and listening. If they are not the same thing, um, my answer is that no, they are not the same thing. Uh, for example, I may hear you saying something, give me a message or information, but I may not, may not be a pay attention uh, to what you're saying. So what will happen is that even if I put a, a lie detector, I can declare, no, I heard his, they saying this. Um, or I heard they saying something, I heard their voices, uh, I, you know, pass the test, but I never listen anything that you guys ever said. So uh, for some people, uh, when you listen or when you hear without listening, uh, for some people it can sound like, oh, this person is not prepared for life, right? Uh, other per per people will maybe Consider oh this is kind of a um, um, this is kind of a, a, um, a attention deficit. The person is not good giving attention. Some other people just call this marriage, like people talking and people not listening. But uh, you, for you guys, you are too young to con be concerned about marriage right now. But uh, so let's leave leave this last one out. Let's just cons con consolidate the first one. Concentrate on the first first two of them. Okay, so talking about uh, listening. Uh, when, when, when you hear someone, this is something almost involuntary. This is something like, okay, it's a biological act. You don't control it, you hear, you heard it, okay? The problem is your brain is not connected to what's, what's going on, what's happening. So in the, for, as a consequence of that, your brain is not preparing for whatever comes after. So when you're not uh, li listening, if you're just hearing. So, but when you are listening, what's going on, uh, this is something that you're doing intentionally with your conscience. Your conscience is there. So you, your, your mind is there. So when you're hearing, uh, you're just, uh, uh, so when you're listening, you're not just hearing, but you're receiving, you're comprehending the information, you're thinking in something that you're going to do just after you heard that. So, um, well, once I showed this picture that is a habit ears, it reminds me another important word for sales engineer, which is habits, not rabbits, habits. So habits, talking about my friend, Chris, uh, I have his book here and, and his book, The Six Habits of the High highly effective sales engineer, he, he brings a very important subliminal message there. And he very, has a very nice diagram explaining that, of course, I, I, I never, never asked him to use this material. So that's why I'm not going to include his diagram here, but he has, has a very nice diagram that illustrates how the questioning evolves as you listen to whatever the customer is saying you. So if you wanna avoid some pitfalls and avoid some problems and some uh, uh, situations while you are navigating your meetings, your conversations, you should be listening with attention because when, uh, even if you have a nice script of questions to drill down and discover the client and um, 
they call probing. We're probing the client with a lot of questions, but if you're, you're not listening for whatever the answers are, uh, what's going on is that if any, any of the answers throws you off from your script, you won't be able to maneuver as it should, okay? So if I could, I would recommend you guys read this book. It's a very nice reading book, very good content. I love it. And uh, with John Kerr's books, they are like on my side and my desk all the time. I use those in my life until this day. So that's it. And that's enough for Chris because he's not that as pretty as I am. Okay, so let's talk about listening with a purpose. So when uh, getting a little bit more practical, okay, I can tell you right now, if you go Google and search, okay, listening with a purpose, uh, you find several interpretations for that. So for example, each specialist on their segments, they will have um, a different perspective on how to proceed, on how to act in terms of listening um, uh, with a purpose. Uh, if it's a therapist, if it's a doctor, if it's a teacher, if it's a sales guy, the fourth guy here in the, in the right side, he's a sales guy. Oh, it's, why not our, us, the sales engineers, okay? Well, this is important for us, okay? So we, uh, even each one of the segments, they have ways to listen and how to interpret information that the customer is giving. Or sometimes it's not the customer, it can be a prospect or can be even a suspect. Someone you just met in the, the line of the, to pay, the, pay your, uh, your uh, whatever you shop in the grocery. So in the grocery store. So it's, you talk to someone, that person can be a, a suspect for your for your product, who knows, right? So uh, the thing is, we, we, we all agree in one thing, we need to learn about how we can explore and how can we understand someone else's problem. And the best way to do that is having that person talking about the problem. So there is a framework for communication. There is a, a way how communication happens. And the way how it happens is that there are three basic, let's call, uh, three base components on this. There are two parts. One part is talking, the other part is listening. And there's a third part, a third component on this, which is the message. So the communicator, this is the person that is talking, okay? So uh, the, person, the person that's giving you the message. So this is the person that you should be listening. And the second component, is the message. So this message is, okay, it can be something trivial, trivial, such as, oh man, uh, what about this weather? For example, too hot, too cold, too rainy, too this, too that, too windy, if you're living in, in Louisiana and Texas right now, too windy. So you, 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 you can have different perspectives about the, 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 the customer just hearing by, by trivial stuff. Or for example, he can say something a little bit more important. For example, why people call, uh, 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 um, why people call this game football if they don't use the foot or don't use a ball, for example. They, why the game is called football, for example. This is, this is a very relevant question, by the way. Okay, or it can be some tri trivial or something important, some just something like, okay, if I don't act right now, uh, my business will be dead in the next few months. So this is something that, okay, this is, it is uh, those, the message uh, is the second component and the message hits the third component, which is the listener, okay? And about the listener, of course, a listener, I'm talking about you and I, uh, there are two important stuff, things about the listener here. First, uh, that we should observe. So first of them, um, we spoke about this before. It's not called hearer. I'm not sure if this, this word even exists, hearer, but it's a listener. It means that you're not there to hear, but to listen. Second thing is that you are not the first component you are not even the second component in this list. You're the third component in this list, which means that communicator and message, they are much more important than whatever the listener has, 
okay? So, um, in other words, in this, in this framework, the message is more important, the message that the communicator is sending is more important than whatever message you have, you have to do that. Uh, when, because something that is that, when you, when you are hearing someone and not paying attention, you are much more like doing that for yourself. You're distracting, you're kind of, okay, I'm entertained here and I'm doing this because I, I, I like doing that. But when you're listening, the person is not more about you, but more, more about whoever is talking to you, okay? So uh, once we engineers, we like this kind of schemes like uh, frameworks, structure, diagrams, stuff like that. Communicator, communicator, message, listener. I have one more for you. The, this one is called comprehension, retention, retention, and response. This is related to what, how you receive the message. Okay, so it, this one shows you uh, uh, what, how the combination of those three factors will help you to have. Uh, like listening or actively listening or uh, listening with a purpose. So for example, comprehension, it, you need to understand what the customer is talking, okay? It's not worth if you go to a customer site and you, you don't understand what he's talking about. If you're going to be there, and by the way, what I want to give you guys is something, something that you can start listening right now and use in some eventual meeting tomorrow. If you guys have some meeting tomorrow, if you don't have meeting tomorrow, you can use Monday. But um, something that can you, I'll give you some tips on that, okay? So first thing is th that's important is you need to be prepared to understand what's going on. What is this jargon that the customer is, is, is used to use? What, what, are this, what is the language for the solution? What is, what is, what is the, what is, you need to understand, what are the trends involved on that? So be prepared, do your homework. When you go to a customer conversation, have your homework done and know, know, the, know the scenario, know what's going on. So when, when he says something uh, like, okay, uh, so because, let me tell this, you can be the best listener in your world, but if you're sitting on the side of two people speaking Chinese or Vietnamese or Portuguese, whatever, even if you're being the best listening, listener in the world, you're, you won't be able to understand what those guys are talking because they're talking a different language, something that you need to learn that language in order, in order to, to get that, okay? So even in technology, so it's, it's, it should be. So for example, you can be a specialist in networking for example, my, my main expertise is networking and network management. You can be a special, specialist there, or it can be a specialist in access control, or it can be uh, a special, specialized in, in um, back-end software, okay? But believe me, if you go to a customer for a, conver for a conversation where the conversation will be around virtual networking with controlled access uh, for uh, software as a service solution, there are some terminologies and some preparation that you need to do before that conversation. Don't, don't go just based on whatever you have as experience, but prepare for that conversation individually. So my takeaway for this is be prepared, okay? Know what you're talking about. Or no, sorry, know what you are about to listen because when you are about to listen about some topic, if you don't understand the language, you can you 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 have zero zero takeaways for that. And then it comes to a second one, which is retention. Retention says everything about memory. So remember that whatever is relevant, what is the information that the customer is saying that is important for you to bring it out later in the meeting or later in the process or even later in the during the quote or during so what is the information that is important so uh, for those information retention uh, it's there's a couple of techniques where I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute but basically take notes have your notes about what what's going on when what the the, the, the customer said and for last um, 
the response. So comprehension, retention, those, those two things you need to do for yourself, but response is you giving feedback to the, to the, to the uh, um, source, to the communicator. So when you give those feedbacks, you're confirming, okay, I, I heard it. Okay, I got it. And you showing that you are interested on in whatever he's saying. Okay. So whatever he's saying, that's important for you. So demonstrate to the customer that is important. So any gesture, uh, vocal confirmation, okay, or a comment, or a, even if, sometimes if you're in a little bit more formal situation, the person is talking less, more in a more formal way, you can just nod your head, okay, but it means that, okay, I'm listening, keep talking, keep talking, give me more, give me more, give me more. So it's, you're going to express that you heard and ultimately that you listen what he said, okay? So what takes to be a, a good listener? So, and um, I have some tips for you guys. So uh, I, those tips, they are not in a particular order. There, there, there are some tips that I like more than others, but I don't, I don't have them, those. I'm not saying that one is more important than the other. I should say that you should develop all of them. But the first one is dedicate. Dedicate time, okay? Dedicate yourself to the meeting. Dedicate, you're not there just physically sitting in front of the person, but your, your mind is there. Your, your attention is there, undivided attention. So you're mentally present on there. Uh, prepare to not be interrupted. So turn your phone off, mute the notifications, close the window, the, if you're using your laptop, close the Outlook window or slack or canvas whatever whatever pops up stuff okay uh so a lot of companies are using uh teams now so teams sometimes it pops up with some notification turns turn them off so uh, pr be prepared to not be interrupted during that time okay so give you give the customer your uh undivided attention and be prepared for this when you, you when you're dedicated be prepared you're the you have to be very clear. You are there to learn and not to teach. Okay, uh, you you are, you are not there to form an opinion or give him um, your uh, your point of view. You are there to learn what is the customer's point of view. Trust me, the time for you to to teach and influence the customer will come, but that's later in the process, not this moment. In this moment, you are you are learning about the customer. There's time to that is biblical. <laughs> time to hear and time to talk now it's time to hear so you should just be there and hear okay uh so second 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 tip uh mind your conversation partner mind who is the other person think about it uh try fitting in on his shoes for a while know him what are what is their preference what is their personal background if they, you have multiple people, try to identify their personal background. When you get more experience, you can get a lot of those messages in that those very first five minutes of the meeting, when everybody is coming to the room, people is joining, and then we are talking, and we talk about the vacation, and we talk about this, travel, we talk about fishing, we talk about this, rock and roll uh, shows and uh, uh, that presenter had a drum set on his on his scenario uh, for example you so th those warm conversations will you give you information about what is the background of that person okay so and later in the in the meeting because later in the meeting you can use that and i'll tell you this i did this technique a couple of times and I was able to relate some stuff during the presentation on my demo, for example, with something that a customer said in, right in the beginning. And that was nice. The effect was very good in the customer. So he liked it. So he said, oh man, you're, you're paying attention. <laughs> he literally used that expression. You're paying attention. So what, is, what are the personal preferences? What is his background? What's, what was his career part, path? You, this you can discover on LinkedIn before you go. You can search the guy on LinkedIn and take a look on, oh, this guy, he's coming from this university, this college, he started as a sales guy and then he moved to engineering. Now he's IT supervisor on this. this. So try to build here this, this background for the person, okay? 
Um, and I'm saying that for two reasons. First, because when he's saying something, uh, he, if he mentions something, is because this is important for the for him. Okay, that's the first thing. And second thing is that if you say something, if you hear some, or if you listen to someone saying, "Oh, I'm tired of this. I'm I'm tired of this," this can be different depending on which person is saying that phrase. It can sound be can be different. He's tired for his competitor. He's tired for your competitor and wants you to jump jump in. He's tired for someone else in your organization, or he's tired from his situation in the company and his reality in terms of technology, for example. So that uh, that phrase in a different context will give you a nice map on how you should proceed uh, on that. <clears throat> that. Other other tip I want to give you, but I forgot to put numbers, so I, I don't. I think this is the third one. Um, ask a little bit. Be smart to ask. Okay. Again, I know there's another group discussing question, questioning, questioning, question. That's important. But when you are, if I have to pick one important stuff from the question side, is that be smart when you ask. Period. Okay. So because. Uh, before you can listen to something, you need to ask some stuff. And as you ask, uh, don't go with closed questions. That's kind of basic, right? So everybody knows. Ah, uh, you, 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 uh, you, yes or no. So people say uh, the person will say yes. You cross their cross their arms. Sometimes you you prepare a very nice question, asking about his future in terms of what's going on and how you were going to reach uh, his, um, let's say, his goals in terms of, of, of new technology. So you ask this, a very nice question, open-ended question. The guy, had, he needs like 200 words to elaborate the thoughts and present that to you. But I, just after you finish the question, I say, okay, how you wanna do this, you wanna do this, you wanna go private, cloud or hybrid cloud? So you gave options. So you, you made a open-ended question in a closed-ended question. So when you ask, ask something smart. So in other, in other words, ask the question, shut up. Let the, let the customer, let the customer uh, talk, okay? Because if you ask, oh, I'll give you him options A and B, he'll pick one and done. So, and you, you it won't be enough, you don't like it. So you don't want, you want to do this, okay? Okay, so you ask it, now you start uh, listening, okay? Uh, as I said, my, this is another tip. Show that you are listening. Show that you're understanding what he's saying, okay? Uh, it's like you telling the other part, okay, here I am and I'm listening, I'm paying attention to you. So make sure that you're the other part understood that you are not standing, uh, make sure that the other part understood that you are understanding what he's saying, okay? Synchronize the conversation, okay? If, you, if we were more technical on this, I would say that, put a sync up on this. So synchronize the conversation, confirm as, as he says something, so you confirm, okay, I know, uh, yep, I agree. Oh, that's that's weird. So we make some comments on that, okay? Respond properly, okay? Uh, a good practice for that, by the way, that comes on, on Chris's book also, is that find out something on his answer that can use as a hook for the next question. Even if you have a script of questions, uh, find out within the answer some, okay, I can pull this topic and start a new question on this. Even if the question is not straight in the same way you plan it, use his answer as the hook for the next question. Because when you do that, you're telling him, oh, I'm paying attention so much on your, what you're saying that I'm, I'm putting your own questions, your own answers as new parts of my question. Because it's like you're saying, your, your answers are influencing me uh, right now, okay? So when he says that, oh, um, it's like you say, okay, I understood. You said that uh, the impact on this project on mid midterm, you don't know um, uh, how it will be. But how do you feel that way? Why do you feel that way? 
Why, why you have this impression? So try to get more information. Sometimes it helps you to explore that point or sometimes it helps you to find another points that you can, you can formulate on the conversation, okay? Uh, this one is very, very important. So take notes. Take notes about what you're talking because uh, if you need to reuse the information uh, after the meeting or prepare a demo or to a quote, an esti estimate, a diagram, you may need some information. So don't trust only in your memory, okay? Unless you have a prodigious memory, take notes, okay? Uh, there are some note-taking techniques uh, I already mentioned. You can use any one that makes you comfortable with that. It can be bullets, it can be mind maps, you can be, you can be some whiteboardings, whatever. Whatever it, it, it serves you, take notes. I have just one heads up about this. This is very important, you should, it should be your practice, okay? Always take notes. As you do in the college, as you do in the university, as you do, you, you do that in customer meetings, okay? So as rich as the notes are, is better your answer later, okay? Just be careful. Some customers, some customers, they may require that you ask before you start taking notes, okay? Um, I, I know for sure that some, some banks, you cannot start taking notes in the meeting without informing the person formally. Oh, may I take some notes about what you're talking here? By the way, when you ask this, nobody will get offended if you ask this. By the way, when you say, I'm going to take notes about this, the, the subliminal message is, okay, I'm, you, what you're about to say is so important that I want to take notes. So take notes, okay? I would, I would uh, recommend you have a small notebook with paper and do that, or do this, by, but you can use your iPad. I, I use my iPad but I use a pencil. So uh, when I'm notes, I'm noting with my, I'm not typing. That's the thing, I'm not typing, I'm writing. So, I, because if he says something that you need to put a, a star or you need to put a um, check mark or you need to add some like a circle, this, you, you do that easier when you're doing that by hand. Typing is hard. The second thing is that, I know that may sound obvious. So besides you ask about this, I know that this may sound obvious, but uh, I prefer I tell you right now, then later you, tell, you say, ah, Miguel never mentioned that. I don't recommend at all you record the meeting without the customer knowledge and the customer authorization, okay? So don't never pull your phone, put it on, on top of the desk and press record, okay? If the customer is not completely agreed with that, never do that. That can be a, that can be a, a final, for your opportunity on that on that customer, okay? So take notes. Take notes is a very huge thing. Another one, and uh, that's that is something that I practice very much, and I use that very often. Uh, five seconds silence. Five seconds silence. So when you ask something and the customer gives you a very short answer, don't start rushing, trying to drill the customer like you're squeezing a dry orange, trying to get more juice. No, 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 no. Stay quiet. Look at him like, okay, I like you, like you, your eyes are saying, keep going. I'm liking what I'm hearing. So keep, keep talking. Okay. Uh, some research demonstrated that when you ask something and the other part gives you a short answer, in the vast majority of the cases, you get an extended version of the same answer if you stay quiet for a few seconds. And I will tell this, I know the research institute that run that, that was myself. I did that test in several customers. I, when I get to use, get to know more, some of the customers, I started to not keep asking stuff in sequence, I started to give them more time. And I noticed that I, I started coming back home with more information about the projects. So I would say that this is a, it's a very, it's, it's, a, it's tempting because we are so excited trying to get information, try to get this, try to get that, that sometimes we wanna talk, 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 and ask, 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 ask. No, 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 no. Give them time, give them time, take a breath. 
grab a coffee while he's talking. And when he finished the phrase, he would drink the coffee. So while you're drinking the coffee, he would, he would start talking again, okay? And so it happens because the communicator, he feels the pressure to give you more detail if you stay quiet for those few seconds. So five seconds is not, is not enough. And by the way, there's another reason for this rule, uh, is that if you are talking to, the, to your customer and, uh, uh, sorry, you are asking something and he's answering you, and as he answers, you don't try spraying more questions just after that, he will have the impression that, oh man, he's thinking about what I just said. Because, in fact, you are thinking about what, what he just said. So that's five, six, five, five second sections, uh, five second uh, silence is another uh, rule that I should do, should, should tell you. So one more is, okay, use your poker face when you're talking to the customer, okay? But be empathic. When I mean use your poker face is that, for example, uh, our customer that just said us, oh, my business, will, I will be out of business in three months if I'm not, I don't do any kind of project about this right now. So you said, oh my God, your business is at risk. Don't do this. Oh my God, what should we do? To? No, you don't need to be that empathic, okay? But uh, you should be like, okay, professional. Be professional. You can demonstrate your concerns, of course, but... It's different if you say, okay, I understand that. For I know that this is a huge problem. And by the way, I'm glad I'm here early so I can help you, okay? It sounds different, right? So you, you use your poker face, but you're at the same time being empathic. You're not kind of this desperate to help and desperate to, to get the business and get the deal. So no, no, you're, 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 you're there to help him to find out what is needed to solve his problem. So that's the... The, the tip number five or six, I don't remember anymore, but have your poker face, but be empathic with the customer. The other one is, uh, I know, okay, I know you have an agenda and uh, the customer has an agenda also, but, and then you start probing the questions and then the customer starts answering. But after a few moments, uh, what if something that you didn't ask, he start talking anyway. Some topic. You're talking about the cloud services. You're talking about the, 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 the migration of the service from the, the on-premise to, to the cloud, to off-premise. Uh, and then out of the blue, he brings, oh, by the way, man, I have this situation with this mobile device management stuff. What should you do? In that case, why, this is challenging because it's kind of can derail the conversation very quickly. So... I don't, and I don't have a quick answer for that. Uh, this is something that we should like maybe have one, one of these sessions just to explain what to do in that situation because the maps can be ultra complex. But I wanted to make sure that you guys heard this before we, you, because when you hit the road tomorrow, you may face this kind of situation. Like the, you're, you're talking about A, B, C and the customer comes with X, Y, Z. That's complicated. So what I, what I would say is that you should allow the customer move along on the direction he wanted. You should start, okay, pause your questions and start probing on that other direction. And if you feel that something's kind of going too far away, and then, okay, you know what? Let's, let's set a meeting to talk about this soon. We can discuss that topic. I have very good stuff about this. And like gently and politely, you bring it back to the trail. Okay, so of course, because you have an agenda, the, again, the customer has an agenda. And at the end, if you spoke two hours about MDM, which was, was not the agenda, the result will be, oh, those guys came here, took two, two of my hours, we never, never spoke about the cloud migration. Can you believe that? So, you, and you don't wanna leave that meeting with, with that impression, okay? But my, my takeaway for that is have your ears, your heart and your mind open and let it go for a minute, okay? Let it go for a minute, let it happen, and then you kind of drive it, drive it back, okay? Uh, but above everything, listen to what the customer is saying, because if he's bringing something that was not ag uh, agreed in the beginning, it means that that is important. So you should be paying attention to that, okay? Uh, this is the last one. 
the last one, and this is the most important to me because since the way I, since the day I learned that, I, um, I understood that that makes a lot difference for me in my deals and in my meetings and my conversations. And the thing is, well, as, you, as you talk to your customer, pay attention to some phrases, some expressions, some um, words, some comments that may tell you that your competitor was there. So, because those keywords, those signs that the customer was talking to the competition um, will give you some highlights on how you should behave from that point in future. Because, okay, I, I've, I work for vendor A and I'm, I understood that my customer was just visited by someone from vendor B. Okay, based on that, I know for sure that vendor B, when they go to the customer, they talk about the wonders of his technology, X, Y, Z. They talk about how nice are the service, professional service they have. They follow the sun support, stuff like that. So you need to be prepared to address all those points in your presentation. So when he gives you this information that, okay, the competitor was, was there, you, so you, I would say that you shouldn't own the game and you sh should own the situation where you are with the customer. You should don't, uh, have complete control about how the customer um, will react to your solution and to the, to the, to the competitor solution. By the way, I would say that you should learn the your competitor solution as as well as you learn yours so you should know okay when that guy comes here he says this this these words or this this these phrases okay and um, so you can address those points and if when while you're addressing those points you can at the same time like give some other elevating the game, elevating the threshold to a point that the competitor will have some difficulty to come back after you, after, after you change those, those, those bars, okay? So, because when you need that, uh, you can address those points in your presentation and you can show the customer that your solution has some other specific features that the competition may not address. Um, well, I have two things to say about that about owning the game. First is pay attention to whatever the customer says. But in this case, it's very specific. And that's it's very specific for this point is that not just whatever the customer says, but you need to be listened to the nonverbal communication. Okay, in that case, I'm not talking about faces and gestures. I'm talking about, okay, you are X, Y, Z. Okay, so and the customer is in the meeting talking to you, holding a pen from ABC. So you know ABC was here because they have a gift, a pen or a, a mouse pad or a technology poster in the wall. So you see those, those stuff happening. You, okay, I know that this customer was visited by one of my competitors, specifically that one. So it makes sense if you know what's going on and you find those clues, bef uh, who, has the, who was there before you did, and you, who was there before you were there, and you can leverage that, okay? I would say that this is the most important one, own the game and learn about what's coming after, okay? So with that said, I would invite you to connect. Let's connect on LinkedIn. This is my, uh, the link for my LinkedIn and the, my Twitter account. Um, I'm open. I think we have a couple of minutes yet before I let you guys go. I, I try to make this as practical as I, I could in terms of giving you information on how practical you could go and start using this, but um, that's it. So I would say thank you very much guys for your uh, presence today and uh, I hope you, you, you learned something. I also want to say if you have some questions, 
feel free to put them in the chat now and I'd be happy to read them out to Miguel. But while, while you come up with some questions, uh, I wanted to tell a story related to this presentation. Uh, great presentation, by the way. Thank you, Miguel. Where when just, I was in... Just for the records, Samuel and I, we were kind of fighting to decide who would take this topic. <laughs> <laughs> We are yes, both inter interested on that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that call early on. Uh, very insightful. So thank you again. And you know, when I, when I went to UCF and I was a sophomore in college, I was part of the Society of Sales Engineers there. And we did a weekly tradition called rejection therapy. And we were going over uh, an active listening unit similar to this. And the task was go, go find someone, either a new friend or someone you haven't met before get coffee and talk as little as possible. Just respond with questions. And it was the longest conversation I've had in my life to date. Uh, we started at a Starbucks. It was someone I recently met at one of my speech classes. Uh, started in a Starbucks, talked, I don't even know how long, we got hungry. Uh, then we moved to Chipotle, got Chipotle. And then finally, you know, driving home and I think we talked in the car for a while. And then I, honestly, I don't think I ever saw that person again, but we just, <laughs> it was, I, I feel like I know so much about them and all I did was respond with questions and I probably talked one third of the whole conversation. That's cool. That's so I do see, I do see we have a question in the chat here. If we know that a competitor is already talking to the customer, do you think we should bring that up or just leave it alone? Um, unless the customer brings it up, I, would, I wouldn't bring. I would act as I don't know that, okay? Because that will make your, your acts more genuine. So, you know what I mean? So if you notice, for, let's put some names here, okay? Let, if you notice that you work for Dell and you notice that IBM was there or HP, whatever, or other competitor was there. So if you bring it up, you're taking the risk that you're thinking about, oh, HP was here and HP wasn't because he has a, a, a the pen came from someone that brought the printer. So, and then when you talk about HP, the customer say, you know what? I think I need to talk about HP also. I need to talk about this with HP. So you may raise a flag that you don't want. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bring that to the customer. Let them, uh, you know, it's, but I would act with the information I have. For example, let's suppose um, uh, you are, your company knows, you know that the other company is there. And you know that these guys, they, when they come, they say, oh, look, we are big. We are kind of $2 billion company. We do this, we do that, we do that. So what you can say is that, you know, uh, for example, uh, you can say uh, last year, just for development purposes, we, develop, we invested on this product $2 billion. So if the customer heard the same message from the competitor, he would know, wow, he invested the equivalent of the size of his competitor just to make his product better. So, and so you're using the power of knowing what is, what's going on. Or you know that a specific vendor has a, a, a characteristic. He sells um, support in packets of three and five years. Uh, and then you can start your phrase saying that, you know what, a lot of people, they, they like longer contracts, but you know, uh, sometimes some companies for the, their better, um, approach for cost, they would rather to have like a nearly negotiated contract. So we have this option. So you're bringing our differentiators without bringing the name of the competitor. You know what I mean? Okay, no problem, Matt. Matt. Nehu, Nehu, no problem. Thanks for your question. Yeah, thank you. And then we have one more and this will be the last question. Um, how do you know when to close and ask for the business? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. How do you know when to close and ask for the business? <laughs> I would say as a systems engineer, uh, that's, a, that's the best part of being sales engineer because uh, 
normally the sales engineer we are talking to the engineers in the car, the customer and we unless you double the the role so you have you are sales engineer and sales rep you have a sales rep with you in the account okay so this one this is the guy that should be concerned about this answer so when we change because i would say this you never ask for the business in the very early stages because you and i we have a lot of work in the beginning we need to discover details we need to prepare documentation we need to set up some presentations sometimes set up a demo or a, a proof of concept and to set set everything up we need to address a lot of questions they have so we we have a lot of hands working preparing everything so and the sales guy they are kind of opening new business somewhere else while we are doing this dig 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 stuff what will happen is that uh, over time in a given moment I, you will say to sales guy look we cover this we cover this we cover this i show the demo i show the differentiators i demonstrated that da, 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 and now it's time to quote and ask for the business so i would say that this is something that you and the sales guy in the worst case scenario you should decide this together okay based on your strategy for the account but uh, besides that uh, that's much more a sales call than than an engineering call. You can you can you can once you're there, living in the lower decks with the engineer guys working, and you you prepare everything. What the sales guy will do when he, he go to the technical technical manager or something like that, or the IT manager, uh, when he goes there. Uh, this guy may ask to the team, what do you guys think? So you vaccinated everyone and you know that everyone will say, oh, this is a good solution. We can go with that because we trust these guys. So this, but you did your job here in the foundation first, and then uh, someone else is going to take care about the, the deal. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you, Miguel. No problem. Um, so we are out of time. For this session, I do need to jump to the next one. But thank you again for this, and I hope you I hope you continue to enjoy the mentoring experience. And I'd love to connect with you after this. I'm also, thank you it. for sharing your contact information for others to connect as well. Okay, okay, no problem. I'm 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 completely available. So if you guys need something else, let's keep talking. So let's continue this conversation offline. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>